Hello, my lovelies. Welcome to my channel. Here we are doing the, or kicking off, I should say, the January readings. As you guys know, as always, we are going to be providing you with some insight that is going to uh, speak, speak directly to each one of the signs. Um, I decided instead of doing separate videos, I'm going to be doing just shooting this whole video for all 12 signs of the zodiac and how uh, this year to come, 2022, is going to be unfolding for your sign. Now, before we get into that and before we actually talk about um, the major changes that are going to be happening for each one of the signs, we are going to be uh looking into what is unfolding um, the very beginning of January all the way to, I want to say, May. Um, and this is just an overview of what we can expect starting the new year. Now, as you guys know, I'm sure you guys have heard of this Venus retrograde that we are going into um, that is going to start taking effect um, in the next coming days. Uh, we've been in the shadow phase for a bit, and we are finally going into the Venus retrograde in the sign of Capricorn. Now, for those of you guys that really want to know exactly uh, where this is going to, or what house it's going to particularly affect you, I would highly recommend for you guys to look at your Capricorn uh, house, wherever you have Capricorn in your natal chart that's what's going to be amplified as Venus is there in the sign of Capricorn. And it is, like I said, going into retrograde. So what does this mean? Whenever planets go into the retrograde um, aspect of it, think of it as it going backwards, internalizing. So it has more to do with the inside of us and how we process certain things. In this case, Capricorn is a very structured sign. It is a sign that is uh, perhaps not the most easiest when processing emotions. And Venus being retrograde in the sign of Capricorn, you can expect getting um, a little bit overly emotional. It will be retrograding for about 40 days. Uh, so a little bit going into the month of February and give or take. And it's going to bring light um, to the things that we neglected um, in the past. Now, when I say in the past, keep in mind that Venus went retrograde in the sign of Capricorn back in 2000, uh, 2013, 2014. So if you really want to get a glimpse or an idea of certain things that may come up for you, it's looking back to what you were doing or what you were going through um, in 2013, 2014, when we're talking about on the emotional aspect, um, because it's going to highlight, uh, it may not be the same situation or dealing with the same people, but it will definitely have um, a connection there. Now, when it when planets go retrograde, it gives us an opportunity to fix or mend um, certain neglected parts of ourselves. Because Venus is all about love. It is all about harmony. It is all to do with self care and self love. So again, this uh, planet of Venus being in, in retrograde in the sign of Capricorn, it's going to give us a time to reflect on the neglected parts of ourselves um, that we've either sacrificed or that we have uh, put ourselves um, in certain situations when we're talking about love, romance, partnerships, even with siblings, relatives, etc. cetera. Um, what parts of you have been neglected? Have you, you know, have you had a tendency of self-sacrificing yourself for other people? Have you put other people before you? Have you put your partner before you and your needs? This is something that you can definitely expect in the next coming weeks, um, where there's going to be a lot of reflection 
and it has or it is based solely on understanding what it is that you need at this point in time when we're talking about relationships and partnerships. Now, keep in mind, Venus also has a lot to do with finances. So again, if it is a partnership that doesn't make sense anymore, whether it's business, whether it's love, um, and you feel restricted or you feel like things haven't really uh, gone the way you would hope or things are not beneficial to you at this point in time with whatever connection you have, you're going to reevaluate that. Um, and I'm going to be honest with you guys, when we have Venus in retrograde, it is def it could most definitely bring about a closeness to a partnership or relationship only through the understanding of each other's needs, right? Because Venus is in a loving way, expressing in a very loving way. Um, and being harmonious, being balanced, the give and take. Now, if you don't have that in a partnership or relationship, a lot of the times it will bring about things that are not, that we don't want to address, whether it's because of comfortability, whether it's because we'll see what happens, or whether it's because we don't want to uh, see ourselves stepping out of a relationship or breaking up or ending, you know, ending a partnership. Um, that's not going to be the case. If it's not working out or things are not, it wasn't built on a solid foundation, you will see a lot of relationships come to a conclusion because of that. So again, it's about preserving yourself in, in this aspect with uh, Venus in retrograde in the sign of Capricorn. Um, so again, like I said, Venus is also connected to finances. It's about, it's about feeling um, or allowing yourself to feel. Venus in retrograde alongside Pluto um, dives deep into what, we're, what we've been suppressing. A lot of healing that happens from these um, planet alignments, but at the same time, it brings ends to unhealthy connections. Um, so it's not a good time to, ideally, it wouldn't be a good time to marry, or make major life changing decisions around this time. Uh, it's about focusing on yourself, you guys, for the beginning of the year. What makes you feel good? What motivates you? What, who, people around you, who is inspiring you? Who is motivating you? And whoever is, you know, becoming a burden, you will come to see that by the end of the retrograde, once Venus goes direct, it will bond and strengthen connections that are genuine. And those that are not will definitely come to its conclusion or something within this process will come to light where you're able to see uh, and really understand on a deeper level that you've outgrown that connection or that relationship, et cetera. Now, another thing that is major that we are going to be experiencing for the next 18 months is the lunar nodes. Now, uh, for quite a while, we've had Sagittarius and Gemini. The lunar nodes have been there, which is the South Node and the North Node. And we're going through this transition of the nodes uh, going into Taurus, the sign of Taurus and the sign of Scorpio. Now, Again, if you want to pinpoint exactly where this is going to affect you or play out for the remainder of the year, I would highly encourage you guys to look at your birth or natal chart and to look at where uh, Scorpio is in your house and where Taurus is, because that's where, so Scorpio will be the South node and Taurus is going to be the North node. What does this mean? This means that, um, Taurus is all about, you know, growth. It is about uh, abundance. It is about, you know, um, it's earthly energy, definitely. And it has a lot to do with what we can grow. Where can we expand? It is a focus on who you truly are and your heart and your heart's desires. It is about, you know, to, to open yourself up to your individuality and it's a great time for, uh, for experiencing joy, love, happiness, um, 
all of this. Now the south node, which is again on Scorpio's house, uh, this is where you need to focus on detaching certain things, depending on where that house is placed in your chart. Again, that's what you can expect. But as a overall, uh, there is a lot of transformation that is happening. You guys know Scorpio is the planet of transformation. So wherever, um, let's just say, for example, you have Scorpio in your fourth house, you can definitely expend, uh, expect some uh, changes in your home life, residency, uh, could be up and moving somewhere else, uh, major transformation that is going to take place there. Now, if you have Scorpio in your second house, that's your finances, that's your money. So you can expect uh, major changes in that aspect. And again, that being in the South Node and Taurus being the North Node. North node is always what we should aim towards. And the south node is what we are releasing or the patterns and behaviors that we need to let go of. As you guys know, north node is our destiny here, our purpose, our, our life's purpose here in this lifetime. South node usually represents your past life, which is behaviors and traits that you have from the past that perhaps can hinder you going towards your north node. So again, uh, a lot of a lot of transformations that are happening here, and also we have um, we have a lot a lot of movement in the sign of Capricorn um, because of the planets. Um, Mercury is also going to be there. Um, communication, um, a form of expression, Venus being there retrograde, as well as Pluto at some point. Um, so again, a lot of major transformations, I would highly and definitely encourage you guys to look at where your Capricorn is at, where your Taurus and where your Scorpio is at, because that's what you can expect major changes for the next coming 18 months. So without further ado, that is just the intro. I want to wish you guys all the very best and happy holidays. Let's get into each one of the signs, and then we're going to look at what the cards have in store for you guys for the next coming three months. Okay, my lovelies, let's get into Aries. Another side note really quick, um, forgot to mention for some reason, we also have Jupiter in Pisces um, and it's gonna remain there till May 10th of 2022. So what does this mean? Again, highly encourage you guys to go look at your natal chart or your birth chart and look where, uh, what house do you have Pisces in? Because Jupiter entering Pisces, which by the way, it's a very benefic planet. It is all about expansion, growth, um, you know, harmony. Uh, it brings or bestows a lot of blessings to, um, to wherever you, Jupiter goes into. But um, in the Pisces, it is definitely uh, very comfortable there in the Pisces home. So again, that's where you can definitely expect a lot of changes. So again, like I said, look at where your Pisces is at, and that's where you can definitely expect for 2022, a lot of expansion, a lot of growth, a lot of um, blessings being bestowed upon you for that house, okay? All right, let's get into Aries. Now, Aries, I do want to let you guys know that in the first uh, beginning of 2022, um, it's going to be very important for you guys to let go of old ideas, programming, or patterns. Um, this is to do with releasing yourself from, you know, past experiences, but also things that keep you or that hinder you in your progress to growth and to success. So it is a lot of releasing, a lot of shedding of old ideas. For some of you guys, this could be tuning in a little bit more to your spiritual side. For some of you guys that naturally have those inclinations, 
This means that you're going to delve deeper into the spiritual side and the mystical or anything that has to do with mystical knowledge. Now is the perfect time to do so because it's going to assist you and help you get deep into the understanding of things that perhaps at some point you weren't very interested in, like that of spirituality, like that of the esoteric, anything that has to do with deep psychological understanding of your behavior or other people's behaviors. Um, all right, so let's see, Spirit Guides, Ancestors, and Archangels, what are the messages for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for January 2022, what can they expect for the next coming three months? What can they expect for the next coming three months? Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. All right, let's get right into it. Aries, there is a decision for you to be made in this month of, or not this month, but the coming month of January, where it's going to really affect your finances in a very positive or benefic way. Um, I do see you a little bit hesitant. There is, again, like I said, there's two options, or there's going to be an offer or some type of opportunity that comes your way. For some of you guys, you may feel a little bit unsure, um, and I feel that it has a lot to do with confidence. So it could be the feeling of being a little bit intimidated, um, but what they're telling you here for the month of January is definitely jump into any new endeavors, um, especially that come out of the blue. So this could be, as an example, if you work in a, you know, a job that you've been working for a while and all of a sudden a higher position opens up and they're talking about it and it comes to your ear, definitely put yourself in that, in that, in that situation of taking that opportunity or taking that leap of faith, because what they're telling you here is overcoming, um, overcoming your, overcoming your fears of not understanding or not feeling like you're capable of doing something is going to be what holds you back, but breaking that barrier is what's going to bring to you a lot of financial stability. So keep that in mind. Now for the month of February here, we have the five of swords and the eight of swords. So there may be an emotional connection or emotional situation where you are at a point of feeling like you are walking away or making a decision to detach yourself from anything that is not moving forward in the positive way that you would have expected. Now, for some of you guys, this could have to do with a relationship, a connection or a partnership where perhaps you've been putting a lot of effort or sacrificing yourself to accommodate your partner. That's not going to be, um, you're not gonna be playing that no more. Again, keep in mind, Venus in retrograde is definitely going to trigger um, a lot of need or a need to prioritize and put yourself first. So I feel like for a lot of you guys, those of you guys that have been in a relationship or dealing with a partner that could be a bit selfish, you're going to be putting your foot down in the month of February. Something is going to transpire that is going to almost give you like a mirror effect of realizing you're stepping out of yourself to fully be able to see um, where you've been neglecting yourself and there is a higher need for you to take care of yourself or put yourself first. And I feel like for some of you guys, this could be um, the putting of the foot down or not you know, wanting to accommodate or meet the person halfway. At this point, it's like you either make me a priority or you don't, there's the door. That type of energy is going to be unfolding for you guys in the month of February. Now for the month of March, we have here the two of cups and the magician card. So I am definitely not surprised I feel that for a lot of you guys, the five of swords and the eight of swords is a stuck in motion. This is a situation where it's a never ending cycle. For some of you guys, you could be dealing with someone, especially those of you guys that feel like you're at your wit's end in this connection or in this relationship. What they're telling you is whatever transpires in the month of February, it's going to be crucial and very important not to hold tight to what you feel you kind of have lost or it's, it, it's, you're no longer in control of the situation. Whenever you feel that way and you feel like 
it's the relationship, it's kind of falling apart. The best thing you can do to honor yourself is again, if you feel like that partner is selfish or not being considerate, put yourself first, Aries, make yourself a priority. Why? Because you're making room for something that is going to be long lasting and something that is going to be genuine. The two of cups here with the magicians speaks about a soul connection and not only a soul connection, but this is almost like you bringing that person into your life or that person wishing and wanting to have a person like yourself. So for some of you guys, this could be that you both have been wishing or praying to get a partner like each other. And the month of March is definitely highlighted here for sparks flying for you guys. So beautiful energy here. All right, my lovelies, I wish you guys the very best. Let's go next to Taurus. Spirit guides, what are the messages for Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Taurus, the beginning of 2022 is going to be very important for you to not be a hermit. Um, of course, we all know the you know precautions that we have to take right now because of what's going on worldwide. But what they're telling you here, it's going to be very crucial and important for you to really um, almost like nurture your social network. Why? Because the year 2022 is all, it's going to be all about social network growth, positive connections, um, major business opportunities that are going to be unfolding for you that will bring you more money and expansion. But again, it's going to be crucial and important for you to get out of your comfort zone. So stop being, um, stop being the hermits, <laughs> stop um, limiting yourself is what they're saying. It's all about expansion and growth. A lot of major opportunities for money, you guys. Taurus, you guys are going to be on fire for 2022 when we're talking about finances and career. Keep in mind, North Node is going into your sign. So again, all about nurturing, taking care of yourself, making yourself a priority, and also chasing the big dream, right? Going after your desires and hopes and making them happen. So again, don't limit yourself for 2022. All right, let's see what spirit has for you guys for Taurus. Spirit guys, please give us Taurus three months time frame. What can they expect from January, 2022 all the way to March, 2022? Taurus, sun, moon, rising and Venus. All right, let's get into it. Now, your first card here for the month of January, you have temperance and the two of swords. So there is something that you've been working very hard towards or wanting to see some type of result. What they're telling you is there's a need for you to be patient in this process, Taurus, especially those of you guys that have undertaken some type of new project or some new endeavor. Um, try the best you can not to be stuck in the mud. So if there is a specific outcome that you've been wanting to manifest, or you've been wanting to make happen, but you have a specific idea of how it's going to happen. What spirit is telling you is this is limiting yourself. So don't claim how you want it to happen, but claim that it's already happened. Stay in that vibration because it's going to make it happen much more quicker for you. So for some of you guys, it is the manifestation of something you've been working hard towards. But again, you're kind of in your way and it could be because either you're being impatient or you be, you're being stuck. You're not wanting to see or approach the situation in a very different as in a different way. And what they're telling you here is it's time for you to step out of your own way, take a step back, analyze, be open to the signs. They will be giving you signs um, so that you can know head on what decision to make or how to move forward uh, for the month of January. Now for the month of February here, we have the 10 of cups and the chariot card. So for those of you Taurus out there that are single, you may be meeting a cancer or you may be dealing with a water energy, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. With the 10 of cups, I feel that there is a solidification of some type of connection or relationship. Now, for those of you guys that have been casually dating someone, I see it manifesting into something more official in the month of February. And it's definitely going to be very quick and unexpected because I see you being extremely surprised. It could be that if you are currently single and not dealing with anyone, it could be that you meet someone around the month of January to February where the connection and the um, sparks fly and you can't believe it. Or you're in, the, in this energy of 
complete surprise um, because the cherry does speak about very quick movement. Um, for those of you guys that have been exactly trying to manifest love and romance, don't, you know, be patient. It's coming towards you. It's coming. It's going to be unfolding. Stop doubting. Stop feeling like I'm never going to meet the right person because the right person is coming towards you. It's all about perfect timing, Taurus. Be patient through this process. And finally, we have the strength card here with the four of wands in the month of March. Extreme passion and intensity when we're talking about passions flaring, when we're talking about being very ignited. I see you guys being extreme, even tapping into your creative energy here for the month of March. I see you guys expanding and for some of you guys travel maybe in the horizon for the month of March. Um, but I definitely see a connection that is going to bring about or a renewed type of passion here. Now, for those of you guys that are in a long-term committed relationship, it could just signify um, that you guys have been a bit not as intense or passionate about one another. And that's quickly going to be changing for the month of February all the way to March, um, where the connection, the passion, the desire is there for one another. So I definitely do see a you know, a lot of growth, a lot of expansion. Again, what they're telling me here, Taurus, it's going to be very important for you um, to detach yourself from how you think or how you've visualized success is going to come to you, whether it's in relationships, whether it's in finances and career, business, whatever aspect of your life, it's, it's about letting go of the notion of how you want it to happen or how quick you want it to happen and just vibrating from a place of gratefulness and thankfulness because it's going to come in quicker. It's going to unfold. And yes, it is coming towards you, Taurus. But again, don't be stuck in the mud of how you think it's going to happen. I feel that that's what's slowing the progress and it's not moving as quickly as you would want. But other than that, my lovelies, I definitely do see a lot of expansion, a lot of blessings coming your way. All right, let's go now to Gemini. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Now, before we get into the cards, Gemini, you're going to be experiencing a lot of career opportunities. For some of you guys, yes, this could even indicate uh, having a change of career or moving to a different job. This may be in the very beginning of January, maybe even February, where there is a feeling of frustration because you're not happy where you're at anymore. But I definitely do see the doors opening up for you. Um, and again, that's why they're saying there may be some type of you know, change that happens regarding your business or career. But what they're telling you is take it as a positive affirmation that uh if you're just feeling like you're not vibrationally connecting with either your business, your career, or the people you work with, um, know and understand that there are better opportunities out there for you um, because they are telling me there's major moves that are going to be happening. Now, standing out, um, and, and, and I, I see you guys standing out and getting a lot of public recognition as well. Um, especially those of you guys that, you know, are into anything that has to do with the public, whether it's on social media, uh, whether it's you have business on social media, it's all about pushing, um, pushing yourself or pushing your business because it's, it's a perfect time to bring in more clientele, to bring in more attention towards whatever it is that you're doing or whatever endeavor that you're doing. Um, but I definitely do see a lot of like public recognition uh, especially those of you guys that are in the public eye, there is um, drawing in like a magnet. And what this means is understand and know that positive affirmations are very important for you right now. So I would highly encourage you guys to put into, into practice the law of attraction, um, law of attraction methods that are uh, going to be helping you in a very positive way because you're becoming a magnet. And if you have a tendency of either uh, being a little bit depressed or uh, being even like a negative Nancy or having a tendency of like feeling a little bit overly emotional to the point that you're feeling like you're becoming a little bit, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not as optimistic. Um, know and understand 
that you becoming a magnet, that's exactly what you're going to be drawing into your uh, experiencing life. So again, positive affirmations and put into practice the law of attraction methods uh, that are going to help you um, bring about more success and more growth in any aspect of your life, Gemini. Okay, let's see what is unfolding for you guys, spirit guides, ancestors, and archangels. What are the messages for cancer? Sorry, not cancer, Gemini. Sun, moon, rising, and Venus. I was looking at the cancer notes. I apologize. Gemini, sun, moon, rising, and Venus. The next coming three months, January all the way to March 2022. What can Gemini expect for the next coming three months? All right, Gemini, you have the Queen of Swords and the Star card. Okay, so this is exactly what I, you know, what I was just talking about. It's all about believing and knowing with clarity exactly what it is that you want and making that happen. And the thinking or the putting into motion the law of attraction is 90% of the job. And the other 10% is taking action with when those situations present themselves to you. With the queen of swords, this is your energy, Gemini. This is the element of air is that of thoughts, ideas, right? Um, being able to have an amazing, you can have a million dollar idea, but if you take no action towards it or towards making it happen, it's going to pass you by. And then you're going to hear about someone that has this exact same idea and is succeeding in whatever it is that they decided to pursue. And there's this feeling of dissatisfaction. And what spirit is telling you is right now, you're very fruitful in the aspect of ideas of, you know, having aha moments of having spiritual downloads where your spirit guides are trying to give you that push to make things happen for yourself. But it starts with knowing that you deserve what you want and not feeling the need to explain yourself. I hope that makes sense. Now with the queen of swords and the star card here, your path, excuse me, your path is being illuminated, Gemini. Um, it is about being clear and concise to what it, is that, what it is that you want in order for you to fully manifest that. The month of January, they're telling me there are no limits to what you're trying or wanting to manifest, Gemini. You're the only one that's creating those limits. So again, with the star card, it is, you know, the stars aligning to assist you in a positive aspect um, for things to unfold in a very beautiful way for you. But you have to know that this is something that whatever it is that you're wanting to make happen, that this is something that you deserve and that you've earned it or that you are worthy of it. It starts with you accepting that so that you can start to see major progress and movement. Now for the month of February, you have the sun card here with the six of cups. For some of you guys, you're going into this cycle of either coming around or being surrounded by your soul tribe. For others of you, this could be a soul connection that's coming in for you. Could be a Leo, could be an Aquarius. Um, could be another water type of energy, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. But I definitely do see some type of connection around the month of February. And for some of you guys, you may be introduced to someone new through friends or colleagues, someone or people that you surround yourself with or that are usually in your social network. Um, they are definitely facilitating the process of introducing or bringing someone towards you that you haven't dealt with in the past. So this is definitely a new person for the month of February. Now, for those of you guys going into March, what they're saying here is when we're talking about, when we're talking about experiences that are not that positive, you have a tendency of running away from your problems or running away from people's, I don't wanna say criticism, but it's almost like I hear people trying to advise or trying to guide you, trying to give you good, genuine advice and you take it very personal, Gemini. I feel that you're going to be challenged in the month of March. Um, and it could be like almost like I'm feeling like very hurt and I feel like my ego is hurt. Um, and it's almost giving me like this, like someone advising me and I'm getting very hurt about it because I feel like I'm being like personally attacked. And what spirit is telling you is don't take it in a very personal way. 
if they are giving you advice, it's coming from a genuine and authentic place. They're wanting the best for you. With the seven of swords, I feel like you have a tendency of running away from your problems or running away from anything that is overly emotional for you. There is a moment where there is communication or you're communicating with someone. And the moment you feel hurt or the moment that you feel like, like they're personally attacking you, you your wall is comes up and your defensive mechanism is either to run away, walk away, or get away from the situation. What spirit is telling you is that you've outgrown this childish behavior. It's time to head on, face the challenge, or have at least the patience to understand and to hear the person expressing themselves. Because I feel like for some of you guys, this could be a relative or a sibling, someone that's very close to you. And I feel that this is going to help you progress and strengthen the connection that you guys have instead of, again, having this tumultuous type of energy here. I feel like the month of March is going to be very powerful for you guys for healing and letting go or healing of past traumas or healing of uh, childhood traumas more than anything. Um, that has a lot to do with your romantic life or has a lot to do with how you process or how you think or view what love should be. So again, I would fully embrace this type of energy in the month of March because I feel like patience is something you don't have and it's something that you need to practice more of so that you can fully understand yourself in a better and in a deeper level and also heal a lot of childhood wounds um, that you've been going through this cycle for quite a while, but I feel like you've been either trying to get away from that or ignoring that or just not dealing with it. And it's time for you to deal with it in the month of March, Gemini. All right, my lovelies, let's go to Cancers now. Now looking here at the notes, Cancer, um, 2022 is going to be a lot for you guys about being inspired. I feel that I want to say the past year and a half, you guys have been challenged in many different aspects. Um, but I feel like for some of you guys, there could be a feeling of like you've lost the spark or you've lost the intensity of being passionate and being inspired about something. And 2022 is all about seeking or going after what inspires you, cancer. Knowledge that will become inspiring to you, optimism. It's about growing. For a lot of you guys, your faith is also growing and strengthening in this time frame. Um, opportunities for growth and, and again, desire is something that comes through very strongly for you guys. It is seeking the opportunities um, to be inspired. And for a lot of you guys, travel may be involved or travel is going to be something major for you guys for the year of 2022. I feel like when they say being inspired and when they say, when they mentioned about uh, almost like your passions being reignited, I feel like for a lot of you guys, this is going to be through means of, you know, traveling or going to different places that you've never been to that is going to get your imagination running. A lot of um, very creative outlooks. I see you guys expanding in this aspect. So again, if you guys are in the creative field, anything that has to do with fashion, with music, with writing, with art, anything like that, um, the way to be inspired is through traveling or going to places that you've never been to, uh, being surrounded by different cultures. Uh, this is all about expansion for you guys in the year of 2022. All right, spirit guides, ancestors, and archangels, what are the messages for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the next coming three months? What can they expect January, February, and March 2022? Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising. Venus. All right, let's get to it. Cancer, your first cards here for the month of January is the four of wands and the hanged man. So your, your views on home or what you consider home, what you consider stability, 
um, are quickly going to be changing. I feel like for a lot of you guys, this has to do with the going away from home uh, that is going to expand your mind or that is going to um, make you a little bit more connected with the universe in a very creative way. Um, I see uh, the hanged man usually indicates seeing things from a very different perspective or uh, experiencing the, the, the having the need to take a still moment and to take it all in. But I feel that you've been in that energy for quite a while now. And what they're telling you, it's time to expand. Four of Wands is always stability, expansion. It's all about, you know, solid foundations. And I feel like you've been in that energy for a while, whereas going into 2022, it's all about new experiences for you, Cancer. Now for the month of February, we have here the Empress card with the Seven of Cups. So a lot of opportunities, a lot of creative juices flowing for you guys. I definitely see for some of you guys, you may even have an idea around the month of February, some type of idea, some type of inspiration, something that you feel very strongly, a very strong pull towards that could potentially take you or guide you towards some type of forming of stability, whether it's starting a new business, whether it's coming up with an idea that could promote your business or for others of you, um, a, a desire or a want to bring it back and, and, and fully um, embrace your creativity side. It's about creating for you guys in the month of February, uh, sorry, in the month of, um, yeah, February. Um, and I feel like a lot of the inspiration comes from love. Um, we do have, you know, Venus in retrograde and that's going to, once it goes, you know, out of retrograde, we still experience the shadow aspect of it um, before it actually goes direct. So what they're saying here is, I feel that a lot of the internalizing um, that you're going to be doing in the month of January going into February has a lot to do with the perception change about how you view relationships or connections. And this could even be connections with family member, friends, relatives. It's almost like, because with the Empress card here and the Seven of Cups, I feel strongly for some of you guys, this could even be like the, the wanting to revisit some type of situation where you felt at some point um, that you could genuinely trust or confide in someone that genuinely showered you with love and with attention and you were busy or perhaps you weren't reciprocating that type of energy. Whereas now that person is not in the picture and I see you romanticizing about what could have been um, and it's changing your perspective or how you viewed relationships in the past towards where you're at now and what you're wanting at this point in your life. And finally, for the month of March, I see you guys walking away from situations that are no longer working for you, Cancer. Now, I'm going to put it out there for you guys. Um, for some of you guys, there could be like a lot of, uh, if you've been experiencing a bit of a bumpy road when it comes to relationships and partnerships, you need to learn to prioritize and make yourself a priority right now, uh, Cancer, that's going to be crucial for you. And I feel that the moment you start to do this, you start to walk away from a lot of toxic relationships or toxic connections that are not of any assistance to you. But the beautiful thing in this is that with your empowerment of walking away from this, you're definitely having a clear notion of what you deserve. And in order to be able to manifest the ideal relationship or the ideal connection or the ideal friendships that you would want is having a clear notion of what it is that you want. And I feel like you're being empowered in that aspect. Um, so again, the moment that Venus would go direct, it's going to solidify whatever relationships you have or strengthen them. And those that are not worthy of you or that you've outgrown, you're walking away from that. All right, let's go with Leo. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and oh, Venus. <laughs> All right, Leo. So you may experience a moment of crisis um, that turns into an opportunity. So I feel that the beginning of the year for you guys, that's if you haven't experienced it already. Um, 
I feel that you're going to be triggered or you're going to be challenged in the sense of feeling like there is a moment of crisis. There's a moment of panic. There is a moment of reevaluating where you're at at this point in your life and the people that are in your life. What, what part are they playing? Are they playing a positive role or are they being toxic and just, you know, toxic basically. Um, and I feel that in that moment of wanting to make a quick decision because there's the feeling of, you know, when we go through a situation of a panic mode or a feeling of crisis, it's like, it's almost like a feeling of wanting to make a decision right now, even if it's erratic. Um, but the positive in this is that it's going to bring to you um, an opportunity that is going to give way to healing from traumas and heavy emotions that you've been harboring towards someone. This could be your partner, this could be a relative, this could be siblings, family members, friends even, um, where there's almost like an unaddressed emotion that you've been, like I said, harboring towards someone because of their character, because of the way they've been treating you. And this is gonna make way for you to actually heal from that and to be able to experience fully accept that there is some type of trauma there um, and heavy emotions there, but it's also going to clear the way and be able to make it more easier for you to connect with people on an intimate level. Um, it's going to help you uh, from those, you know, having a closer or bonding moment with those that are there for you and that are supporting you. And again, it's almost like um, a moment of a moment that you think is a negative situation that turns into something positive in the long run. So again, um, and this is helping you uh, when it comes to your connections with intimacy, whether it's through partners, whether it's through loved ones, family members, et cetera, in every single aspect, it's just gonna help you uh, connect with people on a deeper level. And obviously those around you as well. Um, so, and in that um, also brings to you a lot of opportunities of resources from others. So you can see yourself uh, connecting um, when we're talking about finances and career, it could be, you know, partnering up with someone, it could, you know, find, um, bring to you that perfect partner that you've been looking for when we're talking about relationships, partnerships in any aspect, finances, career. Um, so major changes in that aspect. Again, if you do experience a moment of panic or a moment of feeling like there is a crisis that's going on, take a deep breath, reevaluate how you express yourself, Leo. Um, be patient because in, in, the, out, in the outcome, um, it's going to be very positive for you. All right, my lovelies, let's get into the cards. Spirit guides, what are the messages for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the next coming three months from January all the way to March, 2022? So your first card here is the Sun card and that's the card that popped out when shuffling the deck. Your next card here is the Two of Cups. So there is connections that are unfolding for you in the month of January. For those of you guys that are single, I definitely do see some type of connection. I'm hearing for some of you guys, this could be a connection that is built or, or it starts off through social media, could be um, a dating app for others of you could be through social media, Instagram, Facebook, anything like that. Um, and I do see that it could be a connection for, for some of you guys, a uh, person that may be at a distance. So it could be someone that is not and I don't see major distance there. It could be like they're just not in your city. Um, but there is some type of distancing for others of you on a grander scale. It could be a person that is, um, you know, quite at a distance from you. But I don't feel like it's, a, I just feel like it's a couple of cities down from where you're at, but it's not as local as you would want it to be initially in the beginning of this connection. However, I do see the connection 
uh, unfolding into something much more structured or something much more long-term uh, for the month of January. What they're saying as well is the month of January, there's going to be a renewed energy for you, Leo, where you're going to feel like you want to doll yourself up. If you're a guy, you're wanting to get a new haircut, you're wanting to like upkeep yourself. Um, and this is definitely going to obviously draw in more um, positive connections or even people, you know, having the desire to want to speak up, want to take you out, wanting to just get closer to you. Now, the next card that we have, the next cards that we have here for the month of February, we have the High Priestess and the Six of Swords. Um, so there is reflection here for some of you guys. It's um, okay. So what I'm hearing is for the month of February, there may be an opportunity that comes up for you guys that travel is involved. And for some of you guys, it's almost a feeling like you either felt you dram or you had this premonition of traveling, but it didn't really make sense when you had it. And it's almost like a deja vu that you're experiencing in the month of February. For others of you, it could be going towards a deeper realm of connection with or connecting with your consciousness um, where you're going to be experiencing a lot of prophetic dreams. And the reason I say that is I see a lot of water with the six of swords and the high priestess is the all knowing, um, the knowing of secrets, the understanding on a deeper level. Um, so for some of you guys, this is doubt, you know, delving deep into, uh, your subconscious, um, through dreams or manifestations of dreams. So it's premonition, uh, for some of you guys, it could be that you are, uh, experiencing a lot of deja vus with this person that's coming into your life in January or around the time of February, um, where you feel like you've met this person or you've known this person, or you knew this person was going to show up in your life. And it's not coincidence. I feel like you guys have connected in the astral realm. Um, so it's almost like a major connection here. I, I feel like for some of you guys, I see you guys almost panicking, like um, being a bit freaked out <laughs> about this connection um, because it's going to feel very strong and it's going to feel very like you've met this person, like you know who they are. Um, and in reality, I do see you guys. Um, I feel like you guys have met. For some of you guys, it's like on, uh, give me one second, let me drink some coffee. Like you guys have met in a previous lifetime. Listen to your intuition, Leo, for the month of February. It's going to be very important. And it's also going to bring to you a lot of illumination, a lot of clarity. Um, even for some of you guys that feel like you've lost your, you lost your, uh, you've lost your way, or you felt like at some point you kind of forgotten what your soul's purpose is. I feel that the month of February is going to be very spiritual in that aspect where it's going to bring to you a lot of experiences or a lot of situations that feed your soul, that empower your soul, and that reminds you of why you're here um, and what your purpose is in this life. For a lot of you guys, February is going to be very um, important because it's going to bring about um, a situation where for some of you guys, it's going to guide you towards your purpose. So if you've been feeling like you're not in the right career path, or you feel like um, you're not happy where you're at right now, I feel that for the month of February, there's going to be a lot of illumination in this aspect. And it has a lot to do with your soul's purpose here on earth. So very powerful energy there. Now, finally, for the month of March, we have the six of wands and the four of pentacles. I see a lot of success for you, Leos, a lot of opportunities that are going to bring to you a lot of um, beneficial expansion, a lot of growth, a lot of financial stability. Um, 
I see you guys very content in the month of March. And again, for some of you guys, especially those of you guys that that message resonates with you guys of the finding of purpose or the finding of something, you know, if you've been on this, uh, on this path of wanting to figure out what you're good at. Um, I feel that the month of February, sorry, the month of March is going to be very, very grand in that aspect where things are going to start to fall into place or um, you find your calling. So this is a very beautiful, beautiful energy here, you guys, uh, because it's talking about a lot of celestial things, uh, not the everyday mundane, but it has more to do with major transformations in your life. So very beautiful energy, Leo. All right, Virgos, um, for you guys, 2022, January, the beginning of January, major uh, improvements when it comes to relationships, growth, and uh, through uh, partnering for a lot of you guys, um, this is uh, bringing about a lot of positive partnerships for you guys, whether it's business, career, in your romantic life, also bringing to you positive contracts, growth in business, and exposure uh, is highlighted here for you guys for 2022. Um, my advice for you Virgos out there, if there are any new beginnings or any new relationships that may come or unfold for you uh, from now all the way to January, take it slow and steady because once um, that connection continues and once uh, Venus goes direct, um, it's going to really bring about the understanding um, if you guys are on the same page and it does have the potential or the possibility for something very long-term and very stable. Um, so very important there. Also, again, like I said, anything that has to do with partnerships in regards to business contracts, anything like that, um, it's about growing a business. Um, if you've been working at a uh, career or in your position for over five years and you've gone unnoticed, now is the time to make big moves. Um, don't shy away from the limelight. Uh, put yourself out there because it's going to bring to you a lot of um, exposure, a lot of attention, and a lot of accolades that's going to assist you in growing or going up the ladder, Virgo. All right, let's see what Spirit has for Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of January 2022, all the way to March 2022, Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. All right, let's go. All right, so your first card here, Virgo, is the Five of Cups and the Seven of Swords. And though it may seem uh, negative, the positive in this, I'm, I'm hearing I'm done. And I am no longer dealing with this bullshit. And this is for those of you Virgos that have been dealing with a situation where you feel like your partner has you in suspense mode. Like you don't know what the hell's going on or you don't know where you stand in this rate, especially because I just seen the devil card at the bottom, which is exactly the type of toxic energy that we're releasing ourselves for uh, or from uh, 2021 going into 2022. So again, it's about making a decision, even if it's a decision you don't want to necessarily take for a goal. If they're not putting effort and energy and they keep fucking up, now is the time to shut that door out. Five of Cups indicates the dissatisfaction of some type of connection or some type of emotional connection here because they continuously keep stabbing your ass in the back or they keep lying to you or they keep deceiving you. When do you get to the point of saying enough is enough, Virgo? Stop giving opportunities to people that stabbed you in the back once because you know what? They stabbed you when you weren't looking. What makes you think they're not going to stab you when you're looking? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's time for you to outgrow this energy and only focus on yourself, Virgo. 
for the month of January, it's going to be crucial and important to make yourself a priority. And this goes hand in hand with the Venus in retrograde that we we're speaking about. It's all about taking care of ourselves. Where have we forgotten about ourselves? Where do we put the limit on sacrificing our happiness for other people? It's about chasing your dreams, chasing your aspirations, going towards the relationship or partnership that you want and not settling for anything less. The month of January, a lot of endings are going to be unfolding for you guys. The positive in this is that this is toxic ass energy and you don't need that in your life, especially when we're starting a year, boo boo. You hear me? Mm -mm. Let that shit go. Now for the month of February, we have the 10 of wands and the high priestess, the stress or the worries and concerns, but knowing and trusting and growing your faith through this process, because you are connecting in a higher, um, in a higher consciousness, you're connecting to your, to your divine or your divinity and you're trusting the process. So again, um, this could be the energy that you're unfolding or feeling that is going to be unfolding from January to February. If you're dealing with the situation of getting to the point of understanding, I don't need them to sit there and try to convince me because I know they're lying to me at this point. I'm done carrying their excess weight, excess burden, and I'm choosing myself because I know better now, because I know what I deserve, because I know that I deserve someone that is going to self-sacrifice the way I have for this person or someone that is going to be or bring to me exactly what it is that I'm willing to bring into a relationship. So this is you choosing you, Virgo, in the month of February. Now for the month of March, we have the Page of Cups here with the Knight of Pentacles. So there is an opportunity to connect with someone, could be an Earth Energy, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, um, like yourself, Virgo, or for, uh, for others of you, it could be a water energy, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. I'm also seeing Leo, Sagittarius, and Aries here. But what they're saying here is for the month of March, there's going to be opportunities coming to you. Do not, uh, especially if you find yourself to be in the dating scene in the month of March, do not um, limit your possibilities. Uh, word of advice, date as many as you can and have fun with it. Because what they're telling you is that in the month of March, there is a specific connection that is going to be unfolding for you that could potentially turn into something long-term, but it's going to come out of the energy of enthusiastic type of childlike energy. And childlike in connection with relationships usually indicates when you're having the most fun. So again, date as much as possible and just have fun. All right, my lovelies. All right, so now we're going with Libra. Libra, by the way, very important for this uh, ending of the year and the beginning of January all the way to you know May, essentially. It's gonna be very important for you to um, take care of yourself. Obviously, Venus is your ruling planet and this is all to do Venusian energy. This is all to do with uh, self-love, self-taking care of yourself, making yourself a priority. But more than that, it has to do with having more interest or you may, un or you may experience starting to have more interest in health, uh, whether it's with the mind, the body, or the soul. This could be changing your nutrition. For others of you, this could be like uh, being a little bit more proactive, while for others of you, it could be picking up on healing, Reiki sessions, anything like that, uh, that is going to bring about healing. Now, especially for those of you guys that have been having difficulties or have been having or experiencing health concerns, this is no longer going to be the issue for you. There is something that is going to be being resolved in the month of January, uh, coming February, uh, with anything that has to do with health concerns. Um, that will be resolved in these months. Why? Because there is a clarity that is unfolding. Your energy is becoming much more empowered, therefore strengthening your body, your mind, and your spirit. Your spirit. Sorry. Um, so again, a lot to do with making yourself a priority and thinking of yourself. For a lot of you guys, um, something that did come through very strongly was uh, healing of the mind or taking care of your sanity and your peace of mind. 
that's going to be very important in the first beginning of the year. All right, Libras. All right, guys, ancestors, what are the messages for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of January going into March 2022? Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right. All right. So for the month of January, you have the two of wands and the six of cups here. Um, this is talking to me about a connection or some type of partnership that's going to be unfolding. Uh, for some of you guys, it could be a relationship that starts off as a friendship. That's if you're not already dealing with that person. As for some of you guys, you may already be dealing with the person uh, that could be giving you friend vibes. Or for some of you guys, I'm hearing being friend zone. So there could have been a situation or something that unfolded in this month where you kind of felt like they were putting you in the friend zone, or perhaps you felt like they weren't necessarily interested in you. In the month of January, though, there's going to be a situation that brings you guys like closer to each other, or it could be them openly expressing that they are interested in you in the month of January. Now, for the month of February here, we have the Queen of Wands and the Eight of Cups. I see you guys being very focused and very determined, uh, Libra. And I see you guys going towards your goals in the month of February, especially anything that has to do with finances and career. Um, and again, I'm seeing very strongly here with the sunflower, um, anything to do with health. Uh, I see you guys being more, um, and I'm going to be honest, what I'm hearing is for some of you guys, especially those of you guys that are between the ages of 24 to 31, if there was, or is, or you have experienced some type of, um, energy of like, kind of trying to, um, escape or take some type of drugs or alcohol as a form of escapism. I feel that in the month of February, there's going to be some type of wake up call. Now, keep in mind that we did mention that Venus is going to be retrograding in the sign of Capricorn. And we experience the same, uh, Venus retrograde in Capricorn in 2014, 2013, 2014. Um, what that means is that for some of you guys, it could be that you've experienced uh, a challenging situation that had something to do with your health and with escapism. Um, and I feel like for some of you guys, this is the graduation or this is the understanding like I overcame so many obstacles it's about taking care of myself and my sanity. I I see you guys prioritizing and learning to, to basically put your peace before anything else. And this is including walking away from situations that are toxic, even if it comes down to family members that are toxic. I see you creating some type of distance here uh, in the month of February. Now for the month of March, I have the five of pentacles here with the seven of wands. Yeah, I feel like you guys, the month of February is going to be challenging in the sense that there is going to be almost a feeling of like being hurt because you have to create some type of distance between you and someone that may be very close to you that you know and understand is very toxic. And I feel that in the month of March, you're definitely going to be hearing from them or they're going to be trying to reach out to you. Um, getting closer to you. And it's almost like a feeling of being hurt or being like feeling almost like responsible for their behavior, even though they kind of pushed you into creating the distance in the first place. But I feel like for some of you guys, it could be that they're playing the victim role or they are going to come back around and kind of guilt trip you. Don't fall for it. Uh, Libra, make yourself a priority. That's going to be key and crucial for you guys for 2022 learning to put yourself first, learning to make yourself a priority, thinking of yourself and making decisions that solely, um, that solely are going to benefit you. Stop thinking of other people and sacrificing yourself, Libra. That's going to be crucial for you guys for 2022. If you really want to expand 
and grow and succeed in any aspect of your life. Okay. That's, I don't know why I have the feeling of like having the need um, to continuously express putting yourself first, Libra. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Scorpio. Okay, so Scorpios, um, you're going to begin to feel inspired. That's if you're not already feeling very inspired. This is new ideas. This is creative projects, um, which are going to excite you. And this is also going to definitely benefit you in the sense of improving your love life. I see a lot of creative projects, and this is something that is being highlighted for you guys. Um, anything that has to do with creative projects or, uh, you know, really tapping into your creative juices, uh, whether it's in business, whether it's in career, whether it's if you're running your own business, for some of you guys, it could be that you're starting a business. Um, you're going to be very fruitful in the aspect of if you listen to your intuition and you run with what feels good to you, Scorpio, this is going to bring to you a lot of success in 2022. So again, it's about listening to your intuition and what feels right to you because what's going to be for you is what's going to excite you and what's going to inspire you for 2022. Um, again, this is, like I said, improving your love life and anything connected to children. There is uh, harmony. There is balance there. And again, a lot of creative uh, opportunities that may unfold. What's coming to mind is, as an example, if you are a mother and, you know, you are spending time with your child and all of a sudden you realize that there is something that makes their life so much easier or that brings so much joy to them, it could be something that you tap into or that you fully, you know, submerge yourself in and turn it into a business and turns into something major or a hit or something that a lot of mothers are going to thank you for. That type of creative outlook is what I'm telling and encouraging you guys to fully tap into when those um, moments of clarity or spiritual downloads even um, that are giving you the notion, the push to want to uh, let go of any barriers and to really go after what inspires you, that's where success is going to come in for you guys. So keep that in mind. All right, my lovelies, let's get into your cards, spirit guides. What are the messages for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of January all the way to March 2022? Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. All right, here we go. Your first card here is the Nine of Pentacles. And the Ten of Swords. So the end of the struggle, the end of being limited or feeling like you're limited. What I'm hearing is for some of you guys, especially if you've been working at a business or in your office, your workplace, if you've been working there for a while and you feel like they're kind of stomping your growth or not fully pushing you to continue growing, a lot of it has to do with the fact that you've outgrown where you're working at right now. So it's time for you to be open to the possibilities or opportunities. Start shopping around, start looking around to see who's hiring. Um, start looking up, you know, the position or what you're doing. Perhaps there's a company that may be offering more. Now, I'm not saying to make any jumps. Keep in mind, Venus retrograde, don't make major changes in that aspect right now. But what I'm saying is, putting yourself or putting your foot in the door that could potentially bring you an opportunity of making the double or even triple of what you're making, making sure that you're able to attain that opportunity. And once you have that coming back to the company that you're at and being like, Hey, I have an opportunity where I'm able to grow. I'm able to make more money. Do you want to offer me more or should I take that opportunity? Um, so what they're telling you is don't take don't make risky, risky moves. It's about being methodical in this aspect that is going to bring to you a lot of growth and a lot of opportunity having the upper hand. So again, um, definitely listen to that because I feel like those of you guys that feel like you're frustrated or like you've capped at where you're working at, um, there's more opportunities and more abundance that you can ever imagine. It's you yourself that you're holding yourself back. And with the 10 of swords, it's time to stop 
stomping your growth. Now is the time. And I'm going to be honest with you, Scorpios. Now is the time to think big, like think as big as possible. Like sky is the limit in regards to your finances, especially in the month of January, because that's definitely going to set the tone for the remaining of the year when we're talking about finances and career. Now, the next card here is the seven of swords with the star card. So again, I feel like it's almost a feeling of being in, in competition or feeling like you're in competition. And this could be to do with, again, your workplace. It could be that you're feeling like people are being spiteful or people are not being completely honest or they're trying to one-up you, that type of energy. And what Spirit is saying here is you're protected. You have nothing to worry about. They can, you know wallow in their misery all they want you're always going to shine Scorpio especially right now um it, it's almost like whatever it is that they try to do you're outshining them you are standing in your own you have your own shit and you're going to continue growing but what they're telling you here is don't limit yourself because you have so much more potential than even what you're capable of seeing in yourself um so what they're telling you is shoot for the stars right now because the 10 of swords indicates a struggle. And with the nine of pentacles, the finances or career struggle is over. And you're being able to overturn even obstacles, even people that are not, um, that are not genuine or authentic per se. And you're still coming out on top with the star card being illuminated, being protected and going towards or achieving those goals that you want. Now for the month of, wow. So for the month of March, a lot of expansion, a lot of growth. I see travel for a lot of you guys. For some of you guys, it could be an opportunity where there may be traveling is involved in regards to your career finances. This could be like going to a seminar, going to a training, some, excuse me, something that is going to elevate you or that is going to help you or assist you. Definitely take those opportunities. And the month of March is all about expansion and growth. Go after what inspires you, Scorpio. Go after what you're passionate about go after what you're naturally gifted at. Um, as an example, I have a uh, sister-in-law that is a Scorpio and she is extremely good at decorating. She just has an eye for it. Um, I myself being the Capricorn I am, I do not have neither the patience or <laughs> or the grand vision of anything that has to do with like being extremely, um, you know, anything that has to do with decorating and all of that. I just don't have the patience. I don't, I, I can't deal with that. And she's so gifted at it. And it's like, you're literally sitting on a, you know, pot of gold because you can really tap into that and make it a career. And not only that, but she's genuinely authentic. Like she doesn't even have to try. She's genuinely authentically uh, blessed in that aspect. So it's like, even anything simplistic, she makes it seem just so special. Um, and that's a talent. And that's a talent that is worth pursuing because again, like I said, uh, could lead you into something that is great and um, becoming financially successful and even be becoming financially free. So again, it's about tapping into your gifts, Scorpio, and making shit happen. I want to wish you guys the best. I'm so excited for you guys. All righty. Now we're going with Sagittarius. <clears throat> Give me one second while I sip. All right, you guys. Had to drink my coffee here. A lot of talking. <laughs> All right, Sagittarius. So for you guys in the beginning of the year, a lot of a lot of things are going to be resolved. Anything that has to do with your home conditions. So this could be as an example, if you're living in a place where perhaps you're not comfortable anymore, or there's been a bit of a struggle there. Uh, whether it's in, you know, just finding stability or finding a place that accommodates um, your desires or accommodates, you know, what you're looking for, those home conditions are going to definitely better in the beginning of the year. And also with relationships uh, in regards to family connections, family relationships, there's going to be a strengthening of bonds here. And for some of you guys, uh, this could even indicate, um, 
uh, mending fences with family members or loved ones that perhaps you had a falling out, uh, falling out of, um, or perhaps not dealing with them anymore. That's definitely going to be unfolding in the month of January. But I feel like as we progress into the year, a lot of bonding um, is going to uh, take, you know, an upright um, swing for you guys. And especially, I feel like it has more to do with family members or, or loved ones that perhaps you were very close to at some point and there was a falling out and there is still some type of hurt feelings there. There's a mending of fences here that is going to be unfolding for you guys. Now for others of you, um, could be the relocating, changing, getting new property. For others of you, it could be finding the right place that you want to live in or finding the right conditions of the home that you wanna live in. A lot of growth and a lot of gains from real estate. So for those of you Sagittarians out there that are in the real estate market, you're gonna definitely see an up rising of your finances uh, in regards to your career. Now, for those of you guys that have been wanting to sell your property and just haven't had the luck, now is the time to do so. Why? Because the beginning of the year, um, anything that has to do with property or uh, real estate is definitely going to um, be very beneficial for you. All right, my lovelies, let's get into your reading. Spirit guides, ancestors, what are the messages for Sagittarians, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? for the month of January, 2022, all the way to March, 2022. By the way, I hope I've been saying 2022, you guys. It takes me about a month or two to get used to <laughs> saying the new year. So if I said 2021, I apologize. These are 2022 readings. And I decided to make it a three month basis because I felt like it rings more true to me when I connect with the energies are as they are unfolding. Um, I know that the previous, you know, the previous readings that we've done for the month of January have always, unfortunately, sometimes come to be. Um, but I feel like this is probably something that I want to do every three or six months, um, looking into the coming three months. Um, so it could be something you guys let me know if you guys like it this way or if you prefer January to be specifically the 12th month reading. Um, you guys let me know. All right, Sagittarius. Um, so we did speak about uh, better relationships with partners, uh, sorry, with family members and relatives. Um, but this can also trigger in regards to the deepening of connections with relationships, obviously Venusian energy is going to be in the sign of Capricorn and um, being in retrograde. So it could potentially bring about um, more healthier connections for you, Sagittarius. All right, so the first card that we have for January is the Ace of Cups and the 10 of Pentacles. So this is exactly what I seen for you guys. For some of you guys, there is an acquiring or finding a new home. For others of you, this could indicate moving residency or purchasing your first house, second, third, fourth house, whatever. It's like there is a relocation that's happening. Um, but I also do see for some of you guys, you're taking action towards some type of connection or some type of relationship. For some of you guys is fully jumping, like jumping in with both feet. Um, because the Ace of Cups indicates to me the very progression or the beginning of something, but with the Ten of Pentacles, it's something that you've been working at or you've been wanting to work towards. So I'm going to take a leap of faith here and tell you guys, those of you guys that have had issues with monogamy, those of you guys that have had issues with commitment, I definitely do see you guys taking the plunge. Uh, for some of you guys, this could be like... Uh, I don't necessarily see an engagement, but I definitely do see a promise of sorts um, or the desire to want to commit. Now, for some of you guys, this could be the ending of jumping from one relationship to another and deciding to fully become official with someone that you've been having your eye on for quite a while. Now, for others of you, this could potentially represent the moving in with each other or taking it to a higher level um, when we're talking about commitment and relationships. Now for the month of 
February. Now, let's go back to this really quick with the Ace of Cups and Ten of Pentacles. Those of you guys that are currently single and are not dealing with anyone, you will be dealing with someone that could be Earth sign, potentially Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo, or Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio energy um, that is going to be brought to you or introduced to you. And for some of you guys, it could be that your parents actually introduce you to them. Uh, or it could be a friend of your parents, a friend of a relative or someone that's close to you that introduces to you to this person. Initially, you think you're not interested, but then it turns out that you're much more interested than you anticipated. Um, and for others of you, like I said, if you've been keeping your eye on someone and just haven't really um, wanted to really tap into that connection and see where it would progress, I definitely do see you guys taking the plunge in January. Now, for the month of February, we have the Queen of Swords here with the World card. The, this is you being very assertive, uh, Sagittarius, being very assertive about what you want and what you know you deserve. I see you guys speaking out more. As we can see here, the pearl is really standing out to me, and that's an indication of the throat chakra for me. Um, so I feel you guys, like even, even people feeling a little bit upset that you're probably communicating very forcefully or very blunt. And it's almost like I'm hearing like, well, you didn't have to say it like that, Sagittarius. And it's like, um, yeah, I did because the past two times I said it, you didn't get it. So I have to be more straightforward. Um, but I feel like this is a self-care type of tactic that you're doing. And it's a very positive because you're guarding and protecting your energy, Sagittarius. And this is exactly what we want to see. Why? Because the world card is here. This is you going into the next cycle, the next level of your life and making sure that you're making yourself a priority or that you're not going to be at the mercy of other people. This is you basically taking care of yourself. And again, even if it comes off too harshly when you express yourself, you're not like you're cutting through the BS and you're not dealing with any nonsense anymore in the month of February. The world card could potentially also indicate that you've been very hard or very adamant about uh, committing. And I keep hearing committing to someone in particular. Um, it could be that you were dealing maybe with someone in the past where uh, things just didn't go the way you would want, or you felt like that person was getting too emotionally invested in you, or you felt like you were getting too emotionally invested in them. Someone ran away, but I definitely do see um, an ending cycle that is unfolding where there is an elevation of connection or taking it to the next level. All right, my lovelies. And finally, for <laughs> Sagittarius, what the hell is going on? Okay, so what they're showing me here is obviously you guys, Nine of Cups and the Hierophant. I'm going to be honest with you, Sagittarians. If you've been dealing with a situation where you've been running away from a connection that you feel it was destined to happen, or you felt a very strong connection towards them, but you don't want to commit, you haven't wanted to commit, or they haven't wanted to commit, in March, the commitment happens. And I feel that January and February are just the beginning stages of jumping into the situation with two feet. And I feel like the moment you jump in wholeheartedly, basically, you're going to be amazed because not only are you emotionally invested or emotionally open to connecting, but the other person is going to reciprocate that type of energy. And I feel like it's going to be a very prosperous and very beautiful union here. Uh, Hierophant and the Nine of Cups does indicate commitment. So again, there is some type of deepening of a connection here for you guys in 2022. Now, for those of you guys that are single, don't be surprised if you meet someone in January and by March or April, there's already talks of some type of higher, uh, higher level of commitment that is going to be unfolding for you guys. So pretty awesome reading Sagittarius. All righty, now let's go to Capricorn. My dear Capricorns, I know these couple of years have been very, very difficult. I know, cause I'm a Capricorn myself. Um, but the beautiful thing that I have to, ooh, we got lovers here. The beautiful thing that I have to say is, yes, we have Venus in retrograde. Yes, it's going to be in your sign. Um, you may be feeling yourself a little bit more emotional than usual. 
It's quite all right. My dear Cappies, embrace that feeling, although it may be feeling a bit foreign to you. <laughs> but this is going to give you an opportunity. Again, we go, it's almost a theme that we've been talking about making yourself a priority and putting yourself first Capricorn. Anything that, ha that you have neglected about yourself or what you crave, what you desire in relationships, this retrograde is going to give you not only the empowerment of realizing what it is that you've been lacking in relationships or that you've been sacrificing in relationships, but it's also giving you the clarity of what you want. So I see a lot of you Capricorns out there, especially those of you guys that are single, no longer like you're not settling. If they're not bringing to you exactly what it is that you want or what you're looking for in a partner, you're just not going to waste your time. And that's beautiful energy because you're extremely, extremely empowered Capricorn. Um, 2022 is going to be major for you Capricorns um, in, in the aspect of we're starting off the year with um, Venus being in retrograde. Um, Mercury is going to be in your sign as well as um, a point in time, Pluto is going to be entering Capricorn as well. Um, so again, a lot of transformative energy that's going to be happening for you Capricorns. And this is going to trigger many different, you know, things. Like I said, initially in the beginning of the video, if you didn't listen to it, definitely listen to it um, with the North node and South node. We won't get into that. But again, I do want to bring about the understanding that you're going to have a lot of movement and a lot of momentum in your fifth house and your 11th house. Um, because there's a lot of transformative energy there that's happening. Uh, and with the North node and South node triggering uh, Taurus and Scorpio, a lot of, a lot of changes. But anyways, Capricorns, Whatever it is that you start from now all the way to March, anything that is going to push you in, that is going to bring about new skills, uh, definitely take those opportunities, Capricorn, because this is going to improve your opportunities to make um, to make more money, to, to bring to you more opportunities, and as well as you know, expressing and keeping an open mind about uh, your social circle. Um, now, I know Capricorns have a tendency of, you know, only having a very small circle of people that you trust and people that you, you know, love. Um, but 2022 is, if you want to succeed, succeed Capricorn, I'm going to make it easy for you. Put yourself out there and be as social as possible. Because all the planets, are going to be assisting you in regards to your energy. It's going to empower you, um, but you have to get out of your comfort zone. And that's the best advice I can give you guys for 2022. Um, expand your social circle, contacts, anything that has to do with contacts, associates, um, partnerships in regards to relationships or in regards to business and career. This is really going to propel you. So it's about who you know and what they can do for you. And I don't mean it in a negative way, but if you want to take it to that negative way, it is still substantially positive because it's about um, expanding your social network. So again, highly encourage you guys to put yourselves out there. Um, also bringing and connecting, bringing a lot of bonding um, and strengthening of connections. And this could be relationships with partners, with siblings, uh, etc. Travel is very highlighted for you guys for 2022. Um, it, travel is going to be something that's going to be taking place and it usually will be unfolding in a very auspicious way. Maybe you weren't planning it, um, but really putting yourself out there um, it's going to create a lot of positive uh, experiences that are going to bring to you a lot of positive state of mind, whereas perhaps the past year, all this 2021, there was a lot of feeling of being stressed or being very much in your head. I feel that 2022 is going to be much more balanced. It's going to be less stressful. It's going to be less challenging. It's, it's almost like you're going to be cruising by. 
um, perhaps not initially in the beginning of the year, um, but definitely getting into as we progress into the year, um, much more blessings coming your way. And they come through uh, keeping yourself open to the possibilities, uh, Capricorn. All right, let's get into your energy here. So Capricorn, you're starting off the January with the lover's card and the two of pentacles. I see resistance in regards to some type of connection or partnership. Um, if you've been experiencing a lot of tumultuous type of energy regarding your partnerships and relationships, I feel that January, you're going to be put in a position where you have to choose between two people. Um, could be a person from your past and a person that you're currently dealing with, or it could potentially be someone that comes around that is from your past, um, that has genuine intentions for you, but there is something that there was like a missed opportunity in the past. And I don't feel like, uh, this is a person that cheated on you or that lied to, you No, I feel like life just took you guys on two different paths. I see them coming back around, around the time of January, you may actually be in a relationship or you may actually be dealing with someone already. So there is a feeling of not really knowing what to do, not knowing who to choose, um, or a bit of frustration because there is um, uh, almost a feeling like of, I need to make a decision. I need to make a decision. I'm going to be honest with you. What spirit is telling you is this is in your head. There's no need to make a decision. Um, when you're dating, understand that you have the possibility to date 20,000 people. Um, because that is part of dating. Um, I know that usually, usually Capricorns are not wired that way. Uh, it's like, if you're really interested in someone, you connect with them on a deep level. And it's like, you're committed to them, even in the learning to, or getting to know them process, you're committed to the cause. Right. Um, but what spirit is telling you here is you need to keep an open mind. Don't be very quick to, uh, put yourself in a position of having to choose because, there's really no need to choose. You have opportunities is what they're telling you. Take advantage of those opportunities. Now for the month of February, you have the queen of cups here and the king of wands. I feel like the month of February is going to be very prosperous for you. And if you want to succeed in your career and in your finances, it's going to be very crucial to maintain the masculine energy within you and the feminine energy within you as well. What do I mean by that? So what they're telling you here is when there is a cause or need for action, take action with no hesitation, Capricorn. When there is need for reflection or to tune into your intuition, pay attention to that because that's going to push you or guide you to success when we're talking about making the right decisions at work or with your finances. I also do see uh, kind of like the energy of could be potentially a mother figure or someone that is close to you. Um, there is some type of disconnect there. There's some type of feeling of not fully connecting with them, feeling like they're a bit erratic or feeling like they are acting out of character. And there is frustration there on, on your part as well, Capricorn, try the best you can for the month of February to approach situations or to deal with situations from a loving standpoint. Keep in mind that we have, like I said, uh, Venus in retrograde. And a lot of the times this is like uh, a time that there is a lot of need for self-reflection because you will be having Mercury in your sign as well. And Venus in retrograde, you may have uh, issues with expressing or communicating the way you would want. Um, it's almost like Mercury is going to like really trigger that communication. It's almost like what I have a tendency of going through, um, which is when your brain is going faster than your mouth or your words. Um, and it, you could come off a bit sharp or a bit uh, cold and distant. Try the best you can to deal with the situations from a loving standpoint, Capricorn, um, because Venusian type of energy is there for a reason. And though you may not be naturally um, the expressive type, it is necessary for you to embrace that side to yourself as well as being patient. And finally, for the month of March, you have the eight of swords here with the six of pentacles. So I see you making a decision of 
making a decision of no longer putting yourself or sacrificing yourself for the greater cause or for other people. And, and this is something that is ringing very true to what's going to be unfolding um, with the lunar nodes as well. This is having to do with anything that you've been suppressing for a long time. Um, and the Pluto is like pushing you to dive deep to what you've been suppressing, to address it and to be able to finally bring an end to unhealthy connections. Now, when I say unhealthy connections, let me tell you guys, this is not just relationships. This is, um, and I don't mean loving relationships. I mean, this could be your mother figure. This could be your father figure if they're toxic. This could be friends and relatives and family members that are extremely toxic or that have a tendency of, um, you know, excusing other people's toxicity because, you know, oh, poor them, like they've been through so much. Yeah, they've been through so much, but why do I need to deal with their bullshit? You see what I'm saying? And I can totally relate to this, you guys. <laughs> but it's almost like what they're telling you here is 2022 is going to be crucial and important for you to put yourself first, Capricorn, not only for your state of mind, your healthy state of mind, but because it's about going after your dreams. What they're telling you here with the six of pentacles is you've had a timeline where you've sacrificed or perhaps have done, gone above and beyond for other people. And there hasn't been any reciprocation of anything. There's a feeling of stuckness or there's a feeling of not progressing because you have a tendency of often sacrificing yourself, like I said, for the greater good. In the month of March, something is going to be triggered where it's going to give you this, almost this understanding on a deeper level, like I can't continue like this. I need to learn to put myself first, even if it means being the mean one, even if it means I need to put my foot down, even if it means um, being mean or, or, or not mean, but being very straightforward, um, you know, with my mother or being straightforward with my father or just speaking my mind and standing my ground and not allowing other people to cross that, to cross my boundaries, because it's about I've sacrificed enough. I've given as much as I possibly can. Now it's about putting myself first and going and chasing after my dreams, not sitting in the corner waiting for other people to chase their dreams, because that's the only way I feel like, okay, once they tried and they failed, and they try and they fail and they try and they fail. Like you literally sit there and wait for years, right? Capricorn's the goat. You, your stamina is off the chain. You can wait forever. Um, and you, you wait for the right moment. And what spirit is telling you is there's no right moment to go after your dreams and to chase what you want. Now is the time to make that happen and to stop allowing other people to come before you, Capricorn. All right, my lovelies, I hope that assist you and helps you. I cannot tell you guys how much that makes sense to me. Crazy, bonkers. But anyways, okay. Now we're going to be going with Aquarius. So Aquarius, 2022 is going to be about growth and resources for you guys. Um, this is gained knowledge um, of finances, money, anything that has to do with assets, with, um, you know, focus on your self-value. And the self-value usually indicates how we view ourselves, but also through the possessions that we have. So there is more focus in that for you guys for 2022. Uh, for those of you guys that have been putting a lot of effort, a lot of energy towards your business, and it's almost felt like the last part of 2021, it was almost like you were going up a hill, right? A lot of resistance, encountering a lot of resistance or a lot of difficulties or things that you felt that kind of like pushed you back a bit. Um, there is a reason for it. And the positive thing is that in the beginning of January uh, 2022, you're going to start to see the reaping of the benefits or being able to see uh, the manifestations of your hard work, hard labor, hard determination, 
that you've been putting into whatever um, aspect in your life, you're finally being able to see movement. So I do feel like the past two months for you guys have been a bit challenging. But again, January and February, a lot of expansion in regards to your finances and career, not only from February, but all the way through the year of 2022. It's a lot of, um, like I said, a lot of financial opportunities that are going to be helping you um, level up and taking your business to the next level. Um, or for those of you guys that work in a business or you know your working place, your work environment, it's about not shying away from the limelight and stepping up and really showing them what you're capable of doing because um, being able to remove major challenges or major boundaries um, where you felt restricted in the past, you're no longer going to be restricted. So again, uh, being able to see the results of your hard work and determination for 2022, Aquarius. All right, my lovelies, that's what's unfolding for you guys for January 2022, all the way to March 2022. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. There we go. So we're starting off, and, and, and this is the energy that I was seeing. Um, the Nine of Wands is feeling tired. It's about getting to the point of feeling like you are physically exhausted of putting the effort or putting a lot of energy, a lot of um, hard work into what you've been doing or the dreams that you've been chasing or the relationship that you've been trying to solidify or the connection that you've been trying to uh, strengthen. Um, it, it's getting to the point of feeling like you're ready to throw in the towel. And just when you're about to, um, something unexpected happens in the month of January, where you start to see that the results are extremely positive for you. Um, unexpected news coming your way for some of you guys, unexpected projects that are going to put you where you felt like you were taking a loss, um, being able to see it as a blessing because you're making the double, if not the triple of where you thought you were taking a loss. So again, it's like right when you're about to give up or feel like you're throwing in the towel or like you're exhausted, there is a turnaround in the situation that is going to put you at the top again, Aquarius. So very beneficial month for you in the month of January. Now for the month of February, we have the five of swords and the two of pentacles. And this again speaks about almost the, the like a feeling of, wanting to wanting to like you're tired of taking the high road or you're tired of being the bigger person Aquarius I feel like for some of you guys this could have to do with relationships and family sorry I had to take some of my Starbucks my throat's been a bit itchy <clears throat> and I've been drinking teas and I've been feeling much better, but I still feel it a little bit raspy. Anyways, um, there's almost like a feeling of why do I have to be the bigger person? Um, it's about time that I sit here and throw a, a you know, a childish spit. Um, and I think that it's coming from ego, but it's coming from ego because you're frustrated. And this could be in connection with a family member for the month of February. There could be like a a misunderstanding or some type of disagreement in the family dynamic where people are looking to you to be the one that is mature, to be the one that, um, you know, can be the mediator. But I feel that in the process of doing so, there is a lot of frustration that's built up from you um, because it's almost the feeling like they constantly put you through the situation. My advice for you guys for the month of February is to speak up. Stop allowing people to use you as a mediator or to carry or deal with other people's bullshit because you're the peacemaker. It's time for you to fully speak up and stand for what you believe in or say what you've been trying to suppress, expressing yourself fully because there is something that has to do with the situation that someone's not taking self-responsibility 
And they're telling me that they're not, it's, it's something that they do. It's a habit. So again, you know, if your relatives or your family member, your sister, your brother coming to you, Hey, Aquarius, be the bigger person, uh, ask for forgiveness or don't listen to them. They didn't know what they were saying. Um, and you have a tendency of like going through this type of pattern. It's time that you say, you know what? I'm not going to apologize or I'm not going to excuse their behavior just because I know that that's what they do. doesn't mean that it makes it right. And they need to grow the fuck up like that simple, because if you don't do that and you don't stand up for, for yourself, Aquarius, you're going to keep dealing with this type of shit and you don't need to deal with that. Now for the month of March, blessings being bestowed upon you. Um, for a lot of you guys, I see you guys being able to have a lot of financial freedom. For some of you guys, this is purchasing a home or a moving residency. For others of you in the month of March, a lot of expansion and celebratory type of energy. For some of you guys, by the way, if you're not trying to get pregnant, take care of yourselves uh, because I do see you guys <laughs> extremely fertile in the month of March. And for some of you guys, you, be, you may be welcoming the news of some type of pregnancy here. Um, so again, if you're not trying to get pregnant, definitely take care of yourself. If you are trying to get pregnant, now is the time to start busting moves um, because I do see some type of pregnancy in the month of March. All right, my lovelies. Finally, we've come to the conclusion of Pisces. And Pisces, we have a lot of transformation that's happening for you guys. Why? Because we have Jupiter in your sign. And Jupiter is a very benefic planet. Um, and it feels very comfortable in your home. Um, so this is all to do with being more optimistic. Uh, you're going to start to experience yourself being a little bit more positive, uh, having a deeper understanding of people, of loved ones and those around you. This could even make you, you know, come off a bit more nurturing, a bit more loving, um, craving or desiring um, to be more spiritual is something that is highlighted here for you guys for 2022. This could be having the need to connect spiritually or having the need to connect on a deeper level with your spirituality, um, career, anything that has to do with your health and personal happiness uh, starts to expand for you guys. A lot of opportunities uh, to travel as well. Um, for some of you guys, I see you guys being surrounded by a uh, different city and new cultures. Uh, being surrounded by different foods or perhaps foods that you're not naturally accustomed to, um, which speaks to me about a different scenery. Um, for some of you guys, you may also find yourself um, in the beginning of the year uh, taking on almost the feeling of like going towards a new chapter in your life. For others of you, this could symbolize taking on a new project, something that is going to be big and major that will affect you. Uh, in a beneficial way, uh, the next coming 12 years. So for some of you guys, it could be purchasing your first home. For others of you, it could be I'm tongue tied. <laughs> renovating your home. Uh, for others of you, it could represent, um, you know, a, a, a new transition in life. Uh, for some of you guys, it could be welcoming in a new child, something that is going to definitely transform your life. Um, and that is going to be, like I said, very beneficial for you. Um, a lot of abundance surrounding you, Pisces. So this is very beautiful energy for you guys. Uh, Jupiter is always a very, a very um, blessed uh, planet that brings a lot of blessings, benefic and in that process going into your house is definitely going to bring a lot of bearing a lot of new blessings. So let's get into your reading Pisces. Let's see what you can expect from now all the way to March, 2022. Spirit guides, ancestors, and archangels, please give us insight to Pisces, sun, moon, rising, sun, moon, rising, and Venus from now all the way to March, 2022. So we have here the three of swords. I feel for a lot of you guys, the three of swords is coming up in the reverse position, uh, which indicates walking away or pulling yourself away from hurt, 
Um, for some of you guys, this could be a healing process, a healing phase that you're currently going through, especially if there's been suppressed emotions, um, something that perhaps you experienced about give or take 14, back in 2014, sorry, um, 2013, some type of wound that you either been suppressing or haven't been wanting to deal with. Um, now this could be as recent as a month ago, um, but there is definitely the releasing of some type of hurt or some type of pain, some type of trauma that you experience. All right, here we go. So we have the King of Swords here with the Three of Swords. Um, I feel that for a lot of you guys, this could indicate healing a lot of traumas that come or stem from previous relationships. For some of you guys, it could have been a situation where you're coming to the realization that something in your past that was very painful and very hurtful created a lot of barriers within you. Um, and it's almost giving me like the energy of a person that comes out very cold and very distant. And that could be your love language um, based off of this experience. So there is like some type of healing that's happening where you are reevaluating um, those parts of yourself that are unhealed Pisces and being able to fully see yourself completely um, and understand where you've been wrong when we're talking about relationships and partnerships and how you connect with other people. Uh, King of Swords usually indicates being detached from a emotional aspect or connecting with your emotions because you've been hurt and you refuse to put yourself through that hurt again. But ultimately, by refusing and keeping yourself protected, ultimately leads to the feeling of emptiness because you're not experiencing uh, completely um, the connections because you're keeping them at arm's length. So it's almost like the person that doesn't want to hurt. So they create a barrier, but in essence, the loneliness or the keeping people at a distance, um, consumes you to the point of feeling that emptiness, um, just as strong or as painful as the hurt. So it's almost like some type of reevaluating of relationships and how you connect with other people in the month of March, sorry, in the month of January. Now for the month of February, we go from this realization, this healing moment to nothing but being able to embrace new beginnings. You have the Ace of Swords, which is a crystallized idea or crystallized vision of what it is that you've been aware that you've needed to let go or release yourself from and being able to fully embrace the passion and the innocence. Um, passion is that of connecting or when you're getting yourself into a connection with someone, the excitement, the intensity, the butterflies, all of that, but also keeping yourself neutral and uh, innocent in a way um, through innocent eyes that you're not tainted. So again, uh, there is almost a healing that's happening in the month of, of January, where going towards February, you're more inspired and you're more inclined to go and chase your dreams and aspirations, or even being um, very much like the full energy it's coming through for me here with the two aces of being much more like a childlike uh, when you're taking on a new journey or a new endeavor, seeing it through child's eyes, not through tainted eyes or experiences, but being excited about the future and what's unfolding for you. Major momentum here in the month of February for you guys. And finally, the month of March brings to you a connection that can start off progressively slow, but it does have the potential to turn into something much more long-term. Now, for those of you guys that are in a long-term committed relationship, there is a solidifying of this connection, especially if you are dealing with a Gemini or you're dealing with an earth energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn type of energy. There is a understanding or a coming to terms with um, what needs to happen in order for us to better this relationship or this union. For some of you guys, it could be that in the past, you weren't fully able to express your emotions or your feelings because you were scared that you were going to be judged or that they would take advantage of that. 
Now, while others could have been that you were fearful that this person was never going to settle or this person wasn't going to be able to fully commit or invest themselves in this relationship. And I feel that for the month of March, you're going to be surprised, Pisces, because a lot of stability starts to come in in regards to relationships. Now, for those of you guys that are currently single, I do see a connection coming through for you guys where it's going to bring to you a lot of excitement, a lot of potential here. Why? Because we're healed here in the month of January. You're excited about the future and you're embracing a new beginning, not only that, but you're able to connect uh, or experience in material realm, a connection with someone that is very exciting to you. So beautiful reading, Pisces. I see a lot of blessings coming your way. And I feel like you highly deserve that, my lovelies. I want to wish every single one of you guys the brightest of blessings. Happy holidays to all of you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, definitely comment below and let us know if you prefer these readings or the specific reading for each sign. Um, like I said, like, share, comment, subscribe to our channel, and I'll see you guys soon. Till then, happy holidays.